Well, Ray, congratulations on another evening. Uh, the welterweights and the featherweights, what was your overall assessment of the night? Uh, all in all, it was a great night. Uh, I think we, you know, we had 12 fights, six finishes. Um, obviously, there are guys with high points, and there are guys who are going to be uh, fighting hard for uh, to try and get a spot in the in the playoffs in, in the second round of the regular season. But all in all, it was a good night. Now, it's not a new thing to say that MMA is an international sport, but when you look at the highlights of the night, Braga, Lopne, you know, all the Russians won as well. So right. Just what does it mean to you that like you have this tournament in America? But really, the stars are from all across the globe. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the reason why uh, it's it's called the global season, the PFL global season, is because uh, we have 25 plus countries represented in the in the league, and so um, again, this this talent's all over the world. You know, um, I, tonight you got to see Brandon do his thing, uh, former champion coming back, to, you know, second run at it again. Um, but yeah, I mean, we got stars from all over the world. Uh, Shamil, who was uh, undefeated coming into the season, uh, the funny story with him, he actually waited for me for about three, four months before I even signed him because we were going through the, obviously, the um, Bellator acquisition. And so uh, his manager was literally saying, he's about to move on. I'm like, give me, give me two more weeks. And so. Um, we got that done, signed. He, I think he was one of the last waterways to get signed into the season. And but look, he looked amazing tonight. He came out and finished in the first round. So, um, yeah, to your point, absolutely, there's stars from all over the world. Two more for me. With the Bellator acquisition, there's now obviously a lot more talent. How does one even begin to approach matchmaking? It's not just new matchups. Now you got new rivalries, old rivalries. Right, right. How do you do it? Well, you know, um, right after the, the, the first show, I, I put a few things together. And then the, the team and I would sit down on a Monday or Tuesday and go through the, the, the matchups and, and go through um, who won, who lost, and, and, and then make the final decisions on um, the matchups and, and, and pass it on to our, t our team, which is you know, obviously production, digital, and, and whatnot. And um, so, yeah, it's a whole team thing where we sit down and, and, and make those final matchups and, and final decisions on the matchups. My final question outside of the tournament, and my apologies if this is maybe more for Peter Don. Gegard Mousasi made some comments about not being able to get a fight and some speculation why he wasn't receiving an offer. What's your statement or just comments on what's going on with Gegard? Well, when I first talked to his manager about it, uh, I had an offer for him to fight at 205, um, and he turned it down. So I, I don't know, you know, where that miscommunication was, but... Um, they asked for certain people, and those people went on the card. And then, of course, uh, as any card goes along, you match it today and, and hope for the best, and you know that nobody gets injured. And throughout that champions versus champions, I think we had like three, four guys fall out due to injuries and whatnot. And so, certain things had to happen, and we had to pull certain people in. Um, but yeah, an offer was offered to his manager from me and they turned it down he said no for the record is the pfl interested in having gago musasi compete this yeah uh, absolutely absolutely uh, it's just you know we got to sit down and and work out what what makes sense and go from there so i know the pfl is doing a lot of locations this year where bellator has been like uncasville connecticut um chicago even um i believe san diego oh no pfl is not going to san diego but do you work with Bellator to figure out what locations work well? Like, did some of these PFL location decisions come from your work with Bellator? Well, it's um, <clears throat> it, it, it's really the whole team together collectively. Um, we, you know, we, the, the team made a decision to travel the league. Um, obviously, the only reason why the league was at where it was in the beginning was because of COVID, um, and then. You know, this year we were 100% sure that um, I don't think COVID is an issue anymore. And so the, the team made the decision to uh, travel the league and uh, we're going to be all over the U.S. Awesome. And one more for me. 
out of everyone in the first three PFL season events, who surprised you or impressed you the most? If you could give one fighter. Uh, good question. Um, tonight, uh, I thought that the guys that stood out was um, Adam Burks and Enrique Bazola. That was a good fight. Kai Kamaka and uh, Bubba Jenkins. That was a go. I would go, you know, back and forth fight. Um, it, and why those fights stood out is because it was back and forth, but also there was a lot of um, stand up and striking involved. Um, so there was no um, stalemate, if you will. Uh, again, every you know, we had a lot of great fights tonight, and a uh, couple of fights. Obviously, because of their uh, grappling background, ended up on the ground a lot. Uh, but yeah, the two fights that stood out tonight was those two fights. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then Ray right here. So obviously, the past couple PFL seasons, it's been a lot of uh, familiar faces, same guys in the playoffs. Now that you have such a bigger roster and you have new faces, how excited does that make it that it's going to be much more competitive this season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's exciting. Um, if you look at PFL 1, we had, I think, 12 fights and 8 finishes. PFL... Two, which was in Vegas, uh, we had 11 fights and 10 finishes. So everybody's coming out to try and win. But to your point, yeah, it's exciting. It makes um, it, it makes the league continue to grow. And obviously, as we continue to move forward, um, we'll continue to sign the best uh, agent uh, talent that is available. And then I know you talk about grooming talent. So we have PFL Mina kicking off in a couple weeks. Correct. We have PFL Europe that's already underway. How successful has that been, and is the plan for the winners of those tournaments to enter the global season next year? Well, it's, yeah, it's been uh, obviously successful because uh, the winner of the light heavyweights is actually in the season. Um, and, uh, you know, again, as we continue to grow all the, um, the different leagues around the world, we're going to continue to pick up talent. And uh, the, the goal for those leagues is to eventually make the season and um, and try and get that championship in a million dollars. And then last question, I'm not sure if you're the right person to ask, but I've been reading some rumors online, so there's two very high profile free agents in MMA, Saladin Parnis and Paul Hughes. There's been rumors that you guys have been in contact with them. Is there any truth you can say to that? Uh, yeah, there is. We've signed Paul Hughes already. Huh? So keep that to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, you know, every year it, uh, I feel like we continue to grow, um, not only in, in the company, but also in the talent. Um, the first, so this last three weeks has been amazing. Again, uh, the first show we had eight finishes. The second show we had ten finishes, and tonight we had six uh, finishes. And um, obviously, you know, the fans love when 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 guys come out and, and look for that finish and big points. Um, and of course, when they when they're out there looking for those big points, finishes are going to come. Um, as you know, you know you, you finish in the first round. You're 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 going home with six points, which is uh, which is really um, beneficial and ideal for a fighter. You know to be going home with six points.